Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with my first impression of Sword Art Online Hollow Realization, a single player simulated VR MMO RPG that actually does have multiplayer functionality which isn't available when you first start it but it's actually unlocked by doing this single player campaign up to a point where you get to a raid boss and then you get your NPCs to help you defeat the raid boss, which actually unlocks the multiplayer where you can team up with real people to do the stuff that you were doing with the NPCs. And it's still a single... Um, and then <laughs> there's a mini game that you can chat people up and get them into bed. I'm not even joking. But it probably should work a little bit on my introduction for these videos, because... Um, yeah. Let's start this again. Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with my first impression of Sword Art Online Hollow Realization. Now, I am aware of the Sword Art Online franchise, however, I've never had anything to do with it. In as much as I've never seen any of the anime, I've never played any of the previous games, this is the first time that I will physically get hands-on with anything to do with this brand. Now, there were a few things that really appealed to me about this title. Number one, uh, I've dealt extensively with MMORPGs on my time with YouTube, so that was kind of like a no-brainer. Number two, as a massive fan of the Dot Hack series on the PlayStation 2, so this also been made by Bandai Namco. I had the feeling I was going to get a little bit more of the same there, so I was quite happy with that. And number three, also a massive fan of the Fantasy Star Online series too. And this seemed to have some sort of lobby-based multiplayer as well, which I rather like. I like getting together in small groups and then doing set environments and then coming back. So what I'm trying to say is it's got all the right ingredients to appeal to somebody like myself. Now, story-wise, it's set in the year 2026 and follows the heroes from the previous Sword Art Online game. So if you are a fan of the series, there's going to be a lot of returning people that will no doubt put smiles on your faces. And this time around, they are beta testing the Sword Art Origins, a brand new virtual reality VR MMO RPG. Now, this already puts us into an area of suspension of disbelief because when we're playing the game, we're looking at it from the perspective of a regular RPG or regular MMO RPG with sprites running around the place. But for the characters in game, they are donning virtual reality helmets and physically transporting themselves into the world, seeing everything through their own eyes. And on top of that, Everything to them feels real. People feel real. The taste, smells, touch, temperatures, they can differentiate everything. So we do have to take that into consideration when dealing with the storyline and dealing with the characters. The MMO aspect of it is a storyline facilitator. So don't expect great depths of content that you would expect in a standard MMORPG. And story is a really important word here because that's exactly what the game's trying to do. Tell us a story. Now, never having anything to do whatsoever with these characters before, I was actually very impressed at the build-up of how the characters were first of all introduced to me and secondly how well they interacted with each other and thirdly how much none of them really pissed me off. Japanese games do have a tendency to have some very outrageous characters attached to them. I found for the most part everyone here was very kind of believable. Sure they have their little quirks and whatnot but none of them was driving me insane to pull my hair out bad analogy. Put it this way, I was very impressed at the way that it set things up. I had no idea about who these people were and yet I already started to kind of empathize with them because they were all using language and terminologies which I understood. The world of MMO 
RPG gaming. And this acted as the hook which got me interested in what was going to happen and unfurl within this title. Stark contrast to my previous first impressions video for World of Final Fantasy, where there they tried to use nostalgia and things I've seen before as a hook, and it didn't work because the storyline was just non-existent for me, and I didn't care about what happened to any of them. So that dropped immediately by the wayside. This time around, I feel like I had a group of characters that I wanted to know more about and I was concerned and interested in seeing what actually happened to them. It's storytelling 101 people. Make your characters relatable, make people care about them. And the game is very heavy on story here. There are a lot of cutscenes for you to get through. And although they are voice acted, they're voiced in their native Japanese language with English subtitles. So if you don't speak Japanese, there's going to be plenty of reading for you. But of course, these are very important. They set up character interactions. They set up storyline events. They are very integral to the game. And I did find myself reading them all. I wasn't skipping through any of it. But if you are somebody that can't tolerate this and just wants to try and get to the good stuff, yes, you can skip through as quickly as possible. And there is a button on the menu system which will give you a literal one-liner about what you need to do next. So with all of that said, let's get into some of the crooks of the game. Now, Sword Art Online isn't the prettiest looking thing you've ever seen in your life. In actual fact, it's rather basic, but the gameplay is really, really good. Your character feels very intuitive indeed. You're never fighting against the controls, and everything that you want to do at the touch of the button happens immediately. It's very responsive. And this makes combat really good fun indeed. Not only is it fast-paced, but there is a great tactical element involved too. Now, you can fight a creature and use a slower, weaker attack that actually builds up damage modifiers on the mob that you're facing that will allow it to take more damage, then unleash all your special abilities and attempt to crush it down. Or, from the very start, you can actually bark off some very intuitive orders to your NPC party and you'll try and chain together your special abilities again in an effort to smash it down or you can just go balls to the wall from the get-go. It all depends on what kind of play style you want to get involved with but it does reward tactical thinking especially when you're fighting creatures that are much tougher a little bit later on. And on top of that, there's an awesome dodge system as well. Instead of just tunnel visioning creatures, which we've seen to do uh, with so many games nowadays, the bosses or the creatures, they'll telegraph when they're about to do a move or a special ability. You can actually use a very easy dodge system to either get out at the last minute and therefore get back in and try and keep those damage modifiers up, or you can just get out of the way straight away and risk not taking some massive damage if it got through. It is so much fun, not punishing you if you don't want to use tactics, but definitely rewarding you if you decide to go down that slightly more skillful route. Your party isn't just there to look pretty either. They will exhibit certain combat traits when you're fighting. They might be overly aggressive or they might be a little bit reserved and just hang back or they could heal other people when they're looking in trouble. Whatever they do, a symbol will appear next to their name when they exhibit this. You can give that symbol a thumb up to the character and the more that you thumb up that symbol, the more they will start to use it and exhibit it in combat at the expense of the other traits. But be careful because if you just start thumbing up everything, they will become a jack of all trades and a master of none. So this way you could really hone their behavioral patterns in combat as well. 
And this is where the game gets a gold star. Because the combat was so much fun and I really enjoyed it. Because I actually cared for the characters and I was intrigued to see where the story was going to go. I decided to play along. So I went into town and I went to the quest bulletin boards. And I picked all those quests off that you were doing for NPCs. And I went back out into the world and killed X creature and collected X objects. And I did the normal MMO RPG grind. So in essence, I was kind of role-playing in the game because I was doing what the main character would do if they were in a VR MMO RPG. And it was all because I was thoroughly enjoying the game. You've got to give it a gold star for that. Now, there's a whole lot of love going around for this game at the moment. So let's just take a sidestep and talk about something very weird indeed. I suppose it wouldn't be a Japanese RPG unless it had a side plating of weird coupled together with an extra portion of CD. And that's exactly what Sword Art Online Hollow Realization has. It's got something called the affection system. And the affection system increases the amount that somebody likes you. Now, you can increase your affection with somebody by doing numerous things. Your party, for example, if you just talk to them, they'll like you for talking to them. If you're out fighting and you do a correct chain of your abilities together and get it perfect, they're going to love it. And your affection will go up rather a lot with them. You can have more intimate conversations with people, asking them to walk around town with you, giving them presents, all this kind of stuff. And even the people who aren't in your immediate party, NPCs that give you quests, complete them. They'll like you more. Talk to random NPC strangers walking around the town. They'll like you more. And eventually you might be able to even invite them to join your party group and do all the good stuff as well. But if you get to a certain level of affection with a character, they will let you hold their hand. And I'm not talking about the way that I say hold your hand, which is my euphemism for banging. Uh, no, that you will literally be able to hold their hand and have a public display of affection around the town, walking there arm in arm, making everybody feel awkward. It'd be excellent. But that's not all, folks. No, and I'm not talking Warner Brothers here. I'm talking you can eventually, if your affection level gets so high, take them to the bedroom and have dirty animalistic ass sex with them. Okay, maybe that last bit was a slight exaggeration. But you can take them to your room and presumably bed them because you have something called pillow talk where you're intimately lying on the bed together having whatever conversations it's going to be i have not got to the point where i can have pillow talk with somebody but i'll tell you this and i'm not trying to come across as a dirty sex pest monster here but if in real life i am lying on a bed with a girl and we have us heads on the pillow together and conversing then probably one of three things has happened number one we've just had coitus number two we're in the process of having coitus. Number three, we're just about to have coitus. But I don't have regular conversations with girls by lying on my bed with his heads on pillow. It doesn't happen like that. Dirty stuff's gonna happen. Place hands gonna go places. Things are gonna get touched or pulled. Or right, we don't need to. It's going a little bit off track here. But why this system is in the game, I don't know. It's a twelve. It's a twelve. And um, yes, I understand adolescence. I understand exploring your, uh, you know, sexual orientation and your sexuality. I get all that. But it just feels a little bit seedy and a little bit weird. And then if you look in the booklets uh, that you can get for this game, then DLC content seems to be this girl in a bikini and this girl in a bikini and this girl in a bikini and this girl in a bikini. <laughs> it's all a little bit odd. And I don't quite know why the Japanese have this, but uh, I don't know. Maybe they just need to have more sex. Uh, so it just kind of feels a little bit out of place. I'm not being a prude. I'm absolutely not being a prude. Just feels a little bit odd and a little bit weird. I just feel sorry for that 12-year-old boy that has to go to his mum. Mum, what's rampant rabbit? And that's, it's all. Anyway, 
I think it's about time to wrap up this video. Now, I can't give Sword Art Online Hollow Realization a mark out of 10 because this isn't a review. I haven't completely played it through to the end. This is just a first impression based off approximately seven or eight hours play that I put into this. Now, what I am going to do, though, I'm going to give it either a thumb up or I'm definitely going to continue to play this and I'd recommend that you go out and purchase it as well. A thumb in the middle where I'll probably come back to it every now and again and whether or not you purchase it, it's really in the lap of the gods and your decision or a thumb down where I'm definitely not going to continue to play nor would I recommend that you shell out your hard-earned money for it either. And I'm going to give Sword Art Online Hollow Realization a thumb up. I'm absolutely going to continue to play this. It's got a great little story. The combat system is awesome. The customization with skill trees and such, excellent as well. There's a lot of complexity and depth hidden under a very kind of basic skin. Yes, it has some weird systems as well with the old romance going on, but look, whatever floats your boat, some people will probably get a whole lot of enjoyment out of it. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed the vid, and if you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming links. They're in the description down below, and I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care, everybody. Bye-bye. World of Final Fantasy is a magical adventure about two potentially sociopathic and incestuous underage twins where the brother is the dictionary definition of the word retarded